It's a roller coaster ride of emotions for Paul in Mozambique as we track down an injured buffalo. Shoot and shoot again and shoot again. That's what I, I need to know. From confronting the animal head on to witnessing the destruction of wildlife habitats and human health by poachers, if ever there were a reason to support hunting in Africa, this is it. <laughs> that was immense. That's not buck fever, that's pure adrenaline and... <laughs> Plus, it's for the animals. How the antis use bullying and victimisation to get what they want. We're giving away a beautiful wildlife print by Katie Hargreaves. David is on the new stump and James Marchington has hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Why on earth would anyone want to hunt an animal known as the Black Death or the Widowmaker? Probably for those very reasons. So you tell me. Shoot and shoot again and shoot again. That's what I, that's all I needed to know. That's what I needed to know. It's a hunt that tests skill and character and it's something we've just been told we'll be doing on this trip to Mozambique. This is a different league. This is a different league. This is, this is just mental. Buffalo hunts have the potential to go very wrong, very quickly. One famous Zimbabwean hunter told us, after you take a shot at a buffalo, one of you is going to die. To prevent this from happening, sitting between us and a one-ton firework with sharp horns will be the new Sacco 100 in 375, an aim point, the new copper powerhead blade bullets and Paul. Now, as Paul has only had the rifle for a few days and the only animal we've shot with this blade is a Liechtenstein hartebeest, there's a lot to get our heads around. After talking to Manuel about the, the, the bullets, he said, we should try one of these with a buffalo. They will work well. <laughs> really? <laughs> he, was, he was super keen and you know, instantly said, right, we should go and we, we're going out and we're going to go out and we're, we'll look at some buffalo, we'll show you the buffalo to start with, we'll show you the big herd, I'll show you the big old boys in the, the herd. And, we don't hunt those, we hunt old buffalo, real buffalo. Before all this, we need to find one and take the scope off the Sacco and replace it with Paul's Aimpoint H2. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> A little worry there. Yeah, we uh, bore sighted last night, we put it on and bore sighted it. New uh, Bigatini rail. Yeah. We're going to use an aim point. So that means only one thing, David. <laughs> it's going to be very close. So, which, you yeah, know, that's what it's all about, isn't it? So, um, yeah, very excited, nervous. <laughs> See if I can hit the box first. So he's got, to probably get eaten alive. Yeah, a lot of flies, isn't there? So, yeah, okay, okay. Let's do this. Hello. Hello. Oh. <laughs> you missed the box completely. No, I didn't. Once happy, we have quite a drive ahead of us. We're heading to the other side of the hunting area. As it is 300,000 hectares, we're going to be in the saddle for a while. Our host, Manuel, has created 800 kilometres of track here over the past 18 years, all by hand. He hasn't been in this particular area this season, so sometimes the track needs a little clearing. He's watched one of your films. He's got quite good action. Hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll drop the couple in the bottom first though before I went to upstairs. Oh, yeah? But you know, but he's done the job, he's done the job. You never cut it off the No, no, he's kept it alive. Yeah. 
One detour requires the winch deployed from the land cruiser. It all adds to the African experience. Nearing the boundary, the main tracker spots a buffalo print. It means we need to work the track and see where it leads. Um, nuggets. Nuggets, yeah, yeah. Last night or yesterday evening. But the sun already passed here. That's why it's dry outside. Above us, the sky shows us the fires have got a hold again and we need to make tracks. Not wildfires, but arson. Poachers used the tactic to move animals, but this is revenge. Their way of sending a message to Manuel, who is doing everything he can to stop them. More on that later. Because of the fire, the animals changed their habits. Yeah, yeah. Before we could say, let's go and hunt a buffalo and I knew where to go. Yeah. Now with all this destruction, we need to look for them again and to know where they are and where they are eating or drinking. Yeah. Changed everything. Yeah. But they are here. Yeah. I suppose you, all the animals are moved, aren't they? Away from the fire or where the food is or... They are not afraid of fire, but they don't live where there's no food. Okay, yeah. So we basically caught in the middle of a fire and uh, we just rushed back into the wind, so the wind's hiding behind us now, so and that's all burnt behind us, so I feel it's more scary a buffalo than this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Look out. We're gonna give him another go, are we? <laughs> 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 You're not going to be able to put them out, Manuel. You must go see the pagar. Good effort there. Uh, fire behind, isn't that fire behind? We did a little joke on the way through. We went through the first little fire, and obviously the flames were this high, smoke was bellowing. We were like, oh, we'll be able to tell a little bit of a story about this. You know, we were trapped in a forest fire. And then, of course, when we got up to here, we went through another big uh, lead of smoke and then a bit of a fire, and then we got to the, yeah, and then we were like in the middle, engulfed in thick white smoke and crackling as you can hear now the crackling of the the flames and i, I see mr mr right panic a little bit he's, he's a little bit panicky i think with you caused to be honest i was panicky don't i'm not lying <laughs> i had the full, full ppe on i couldn't i couldn't see so yeah no it's uh but it's, it's when you see the boys do it all the time laughing and yeah. thinking it's funny i mean you know i think they like danger anyway they, they like a bit of danger so to these yeah they're used to it. They're used and, to nature, aren't they? They just understand it. Yeah, and, I, and it's, this is not, we're not talking about a little forest fire you get in the UK. This is immense. I can't wait to say it's it lost half, wasn't it? It was thousands of hectares. It's not like a few acres. This is thousands of hectares burning, as, as you can see behind, like this. Obviously, some areas are worse than others, but where it's thicker grass, but. I mean, the trees, the trees won't die. Basically, all the, all the, all the, all the shoots will come back again once they have a rain or a bit of moisture. But uh, yeah, it's a way, I suppose, that the place regenerates itself. But I think, in all accounts, it's actually not from uh, natural causes. This is from some wrongdoing. So not good, really. That was quite scary, wasn't it? Yeah. Time and time again, we have to stop, wait then drive through another front edge of fire. With the animals displaced, our buffalo hunt will be even harder. The following morning, a blanket is laid on our seat to reduce the buttock bashing. It's going to be another long drive.
after three hours, a hoof print in the sand close to a riverbed gets trackers working. Get the rifle. And the bullet. <laughs> Looks like we're about to start hunting a Mozambique buffalo. This buffalo is an old buffalo. Yeah. We know that is is a buffalo to, to, take, to out. take out. Yeah, perfect. Fingers crossed. And we're now you are going to see what is real hunt. Yeah. Now we, for the first time, we start to hunt. <laughs> In the middle of elephants and buffaloes. Really? Following a, a single, track of a single buffalo. Single buffalo. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of tracks here as well. Very good. There's a lot of tracks. Yeah. But um, the one we want is that one. Yeah. And they'll pick that out all the way through that a whole lot. Yeah. 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 You're saying if the buffalo's laid in the shade, he gets up and moves out, clear shot, he'll say shoot, shoot, and I've got to take the shot. Mm. And he said, obviously, front end, heart, lungs, get a good one in it, and then keep going. So, luckily, takes five but hopefully you won't need five but the anticipation is a part of it isn't it for this thing yeah it's massive like i said i'm actually pleased it's today mm. yesterday i just wasn't feeling quite i don't know i don't know if it was, it was it, what it was maybe maybe the the, the, the traveling fair, fair travel here um but today i feel like a bit more alert and um and i think my advice is on this game if you if you're not alert don't play because you know, the uh, the results obviously death, death. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so. Um, but I got a gun. You got a camera. I'm really sort well. of like uh, ready, ready for action, and they're away. They're keen. So let's go. Okay. Now, unless you have witnessed the incredible skills of an African tracker, it is difficult to explain just how extraordinary their abilities are. Two guys at the front, Manuel tracking with them behind. Then when they lose the track, it's like a guy comes from the back, round, and then starburst, find the track again, find it, back to back to their formation again. Yeah, great thing. I better keep up. From soft sand to leaf litter to grass, they are able to single out our bull. It's difficult not to suspect that this is all choreographed, but there is just no way. After two hours of following tracks, something throws them. You met another one. Oh, now they are two. <laughs> Nuggets of information paint a picture. We have a sense of how this wild animal is living out its day, minutes or maybe hours ahead of us. I think we've uh, got the thickest bit of cover here. That's everything I didn't want. He was laying down here. Okay.
for more. Come here, come here. Give him a hug. Here, here, here. Yeah. Okay. No more. I'm done. Okay. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Holy <Dude>. smoke. Thank you. Where are you trembling? I am trembling. We charged us. <laughs> are you tired? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was immense. That's not buck fever, that's pure adrenaline and <laughs> He didn't uh I recycled. I kept going. Wow. That was um That's a buffalo. That's a, that was I can't speak. It's like uh, don't speak. <laughs> wow wait. He just came crashing as if like, oh my god, he was looking at I know I I shot and I see him just take it and just come straight at us, I thought. He's gonna come. <laughs> he's, he's gonna come, and he's just crushing through this like it was nothing. Thank you. Oh man. I'm so pleased because he was obscured behind the bamboo. I was hoping he was going to come a bit closer mm -hmm. so I can get a clearer shot of him. That was fast. No, he just come through. He just, just towered through. Give him the, give him the the no, it's just like... <laughs> and he was here. If you have to feel fear, he's after. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, I didn't think any. All I thought about was yeah. do it. I have do it. To, I have do it. To That's it. it. Yeah. Yeah. And especially on that last shot, it's like... Punch. Have it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh man. Come on. I'll give you a little hug, really, David. <laughs> Come on, give me a hug. I, I kept you alive. <laughs> oh, David. What are we doing? He has a snare on the neck. Uh, really? Let's put him up, shall we? Vamos lá, levanta alto para cá. You see why I hate poachers? Let's take it off. No, the wire's still here. It's inside the skin. The skin is closed. Here. And that's the wire around it. And what sort of wire is this? Just like... Uh, steel cable. Steel cable wire. Here, look, David. He took him out of his misery. Yes. Wow. And he nearly... Took, took us. you out of your misery. <laughs> <laughs> Is that old? Young? Very old. Very old. 13, 14. It's a very old buffalo. This one, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. You couldn't script that. It's going to be difficult for for David to pass on what we went through for that little section here. But I think it was fantastic and it was well worth it. We are all safe, and it was actually a good deal to the animal because he must have been suffering quite a bit. Manuel was saying like over a year with that snare in his no in his neck, so. Must have been hell of a lot of uncomfort. You know? yeah. So yeah, in the end of the day, it was not like a young, young, 
Um, Buffalo was old, you reckon about 14 years old, um, and was in pain, so it was, yeah. Did you feel a little bit? Yeah, it was, of course, I, I thought that thing, I mean, tum tumble. Who, if you're not, you can't, you, you know, you're not alive if you didn't feel something. Yeah, actually, of course not, you know, when you see the, the cane is going everywhere, and if you try to break one of those things, you need a few whacks with a machete, and that thing was just coming through there like paper, <laughs> wasn't it? it was. And, and Mr. Shieldley will just <laughs> send it down the bottle. Really good on him, good on him. Oh, well done. The question is, would you use 100% copper, no problem in this game? If I would use this bullet to yes. hunt, yes, I would. It's the cameraman's handy friend. <laughs> <laughs> I love that rifle. I've never <laughs> shot it, but I love it. The aim point, that is a machine for the job. 100%. For that close quarter shooting, there was my eye was on the buffalo, the dot. I didn't think about anything else. There was nothing else in my vision. All I could see was the dot and the buffalo. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And the last shot, it was like... Obviously, it was probably the last shot saloon, maybe. But you would have thought that had been on the second shot because the second shot hit him right, right here. Can't even remember dropping to my knee, to be honest with you. I just went into auto mode. But the last shot, I knew the last shot. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know. <laughs> this little bit of kit here. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. We leave the buffalo covered in leaves and branches to keep the vultures off. <laughs> and just in case you need to see it from a totally different perspective, Michael reenacts it for us. Bullet, bullet, ballast, ballast, ballast. Really? I think right, thank you. Don't don't tell him though. No, no, don't tell him. No. 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 Depois eu tô ia fugir, cara. Se tu dizes, depois. I impress the trackers. I'll take that. I think they're talking about me, you No, man. no, definitely not. No, definitely not. Estou ver aí tudo aqui na cadeira. Time for a drink, Serge. Time for a drink, yes. Just to say, 16,000 steps yes. today. I'm not joking, but look, when the oh. cameraman gets that dirty, dirty oh. they have to work. <laughs> <laughs> they have to work. <laughs> You're not a walk in the park, that's for sure. <laughs> wow. What's this? It's far from a walk in the park. Oh man, that was hard. <laughs> I think it was just under four hours to get there. To get in, and then God knows how far back. Good training. Jesus <laughs> One hour to get back to the truck, and a further three hours to drive back to camp. That doesn't take into account repairing a puncture. <laughs> and more fires to cope with. Quite a day. This gang of guys left camp at three the following morning to collect our buffalo. The skinner, Omar, takes a GoPro to capture the work that goes into the extraction. For starters, they needed to create a track to it, then gralic it, and cut it into small enough pieces to get it into the Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, Paul. Some bad white, some While that is going on, we see the extent of the poaching problem here. This collection of snares is just from the last few months. They are made from all sorts of materials. And just to be clear, the poaching here is not for food. Manuel gives meat away for free to the community. This is about selling meat for cash, for booze, and they're killing their own people by doing it. 
This is meat to sell. To sell, not, not meat, meat to, to survive. Survive, no. no. This is, so this is this is the this difference. Is, yeah, that's the difference with the, with the, with the, with the poachers is to have monetary game with wildlife. It's reckless, really. It's reckless to a point that they don't care about nothing else, no. about the neighbors, about the the, the, the population. The cash, yeah. Just the cash. The cash in the end of the day. Yeah. When we take people to to court, they use the snares as evidence. In 2016, they changed the law and the poaching is Criminal. criminalized. Criminalized, yeah. And um, now we use all we can to put them in jail. This is the trigger. Ah. That's the trigger. There are no scruples on the poachers. Because the lions or the leopards sometimes come to get the animals that are trapped, they poison the meat to poison the lions and the leopards. So they dry that meat and they go and sell the meat. In the past they were using chemicals. They put them in the water when there's only a few points of water and the animals come to drink and die. With the fish is the same. And the stomach cancer in this region of the country increased enormously. Enormously. People is dying and they don't know why they died. Next time, in our last film from Mozambique, the buffalo arrives in camp. We learn how to bait predators, Sergio hunts warthog with the sacco, and the guys get to grips with thermal. For more information about the new sacco 100 and the sacco powerhead blade, go to sacco.fi. To learn about Aimpoint's red dot sites, go to aimpoint.com. And if you'd like to experience buffalo hunting Mozambique style, drop Sergio a line via his website, circoutwildharvest.com. Thank you all who took part in that. Now, the Field Sports Nation has a beautiful wildlife print as a prize draw this week. It's the winner's choice of prints by Katie Hargreaves, which they can see on her website, katiehargreavesart.com and they can find out how to enter on the Field Sports Nation's own TV show, Field Sports Extra, which is out on Tuesdays. And you can watch that TV show by joining them for a fiver a month. Link to that below. Now, back from Mozambique and happy to be alive. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Antis are using billboards in London to brand a big game hunter a serial killer. The hate campaign targeted TV rat catcher Ricky Clark as part of a high profile attack just before MPs debated a private member's bill to ban the importing of hunting trophies in Parliament. The campaign to ban trophy hunting placed adverts outside Westminster and railway stations naming Mr Clark and others as criminals because they hunt abroad. The posters also had slogans like British hunters are getting away with murder. Professor Adam Hart says the billboard campaign doesn't help the anti's cause. For me, I think it really shows the, the lack of, of rigour behind some of the arguments that are being used to, to advance the bans. It's a classic example of playing the player. <laughs> You know, not the ball. And you know, we find that a lot, and it's why people will always revert to to calling anyone that, that calls out evidence, you know, a shill. Right? They can't answer the questions. So, you know, we, we've asked continually which species are currently being threatened by trophy hunting because we can't find any. And we'll have more with Professor Adam Hart later in the show. Meanwhile, Antis have failed to ban an English Boxing Day meet. Bungay Town Council in Suffolk rejected an online petition calling for the event to be cancelled. An anonymous group collected signatures from as far away as Canada. It urged the council and Suffolk's police not to allow the hunt to parade through the streets. The Waveney Harriers, which organises the meet, says it's always well attended and brings a boost to local businesses. The town council decided it did not want to stop the event. Antis have failed to ban hunting in other areas too, including Cornwall, North Northamptonshire, Ledbury and Tiverton. Two pressure groups are accusing Natural Resources Wales of being wasteful and hypocritical because of its expenditure on diesel and petrol vehicles. The Countryside Alliance and the Taxpayers Alliance made freedom of information requests that revealed NRW spent more than £1.6 million on buying and hiring vehicles over the past three years. Some of the vehicles were electric, the majority were petrol or diesel. 
I think NRW should publish on their website annually what exactly it is they're spending, particularly with regards to the transport issue that we've now raised with the Taxpayers Alliance. They need to be honest and open with the public. It's public money that they are spending, and I think they need to review their priorities and their internal policies as a matter of urgency. Hen harriers are to be bred in captivity for the first time in England. Natural England and the International Centre for Birds of Prey are running the project. They brought six males and six female hen harriers from France and Spain to form breeding pairs. They will release the birds on Salisbury Plain in order to improve the range and conservation status of the species. The plan is to release at least 100 birds over the next five years. The RSPB opposes hen harrier reintroduction schemes and lost a high court battle to stop DEFRA's hen harrier brood management scheme. Shooting groups and chefs treated Welsh politicians to a game meat feast at the Senedd. They entertained members of the Senedd to show how delicious and healthy game meat is. Aim to Sustain and Four Cymru organised the event. Spike Butcher of Aim to Sustain says the importance of shooting to Wales in terms of economic, environmental and social benefits were delivered through food. Being able to get into the heart of government uh, and have cross-party representation at the event to enable us to start to have those conversations uh, and to show how fantastic wild game is, uh, to sell our story uh, and to, you know, to show off fantastic Fred, um, Welsh chefs as well was, was brilliant. The European Union may be about to address its wolf problem. The European Federation for Hunting and Conservation, or FACE, welcomes a review of the protection status of large carnivores. The European Parliament voted on a joint resolution on the issue. Many large carnivore populations, especially wolves, are expanding. FACE says the hunters are actively involved in carnivore management and can face legal and administrative issues because of the directive. Thanks to Richard Walton for the story. Wildcats may return to England in 2024. The Devon Wildlife Trust is behind the plan. It's advertising for a wildcat officer, asking if applicants would like to be at the forefront of a radical species recovery programme and play a pivotal role in reversing the fortunes of Britain's rarest mammal. The successful candidate will lead a feasibility study which will judge whether wildcats could be reintroduced successfully to the region. Norway has a new predator. The golden jackal has gained a foothold in the north of the country. The animal, which looks like a cross between a fox and a wolf, was caught on camera in 2019. The Norwegian Environment Agency says a pair of golden jackals have now made the country their permanent residence. The animals can't be shot or moved. Researchers describe them as climate refugees as they move north where the weather is colder. Thanks to Per Holmseth for the story. India abstained from a vote seeking the commercial sale of African elephant tusks. At a meeting of CITES members in Panama, India positioned itself alongside countries that depend on hunting tourism for income. Zimbabwe introduced a proposal to allow the commercial sale of elephant tusks that were stockpiled by governments in Botswana, Namibia, South Africa and Zimbabwe, which CITES rejected. India's abstention is significant as Namibia claims that it sought New Delhi's cooperation in exchange for moving eight of its cheetahs to India. A spokesman for the Indian government gave no explanation for not voting against the proposal. And finally, Warwickshire police stumbled across a Cinderella trying to get to a hunt ball in the back of a horse trailer. When the rural crime officers heard noises from the trailer, they checked inside to find 20 people who were using the horse box as transport to the event. The police were checking on vehicles as there had been a spate of thefts. Police say they charged the 39-year-old woman driver with several offences and other officers helped Cinderella getting to the ball more safely with her extensive entourage. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Buying shooting kits? Then head to Kit Finder, and our team will help you find the right product at a fair price from dealers all over the UK. Kit Finder, the shooting kit comparison website.
Next, the Antis have been revving up their activity over the reading of the Trophy Imports Bill in Parliament last week. News correspondent Deborah Hadfield finds out what it feels like when you are under media attack. Professor Adam Hart speaks up for hunting tourism. He's one of the few academics brave enough to support regulated trophy hunting. Science says it works for wildlife, but the professor's support for it draws abuse from anti-hunting academics. I think if I was a bit younger and things were uh, different, you know, I was earlier in my career and stuff, it would probably affect me. I know for a fact that a number of academics won't speak out on social media because they don't want to get involved with that. And you know what, I, re I respect that, but I... I I'm quite happy to get involved with this. I've been looking at this for the last decade or so. I've been essentially an applied ecologist working in Southern Africa and looking at ecological situations, which include, of course, hunting. I've been looking at hunting for the last five or six years in some depth, actually the last seven years, I think. Big game hunters also face discrimination from a billboard campaign outside Parliament. So it doesn't surprise me at all. Um, but I don't think it really, I mean, it, it helps for them getting publicity. Um, but does it help for conservation? No, um, no, it doesn't. Yes, I do receive some personal abuse, a lot less than others in this debate, I must say, um, probably, <laughs> or I don't see it because I tend to mute a lot of people. Um, you know, that, that shouldn't stop us as, as scientists speaking up and defending the evidence behind conservation. And it is a science and there are, you know, there's plenty of evidence there. And, you know, it's our job as scientists to present that evidence to people. And that's what we continue to do. Adam Hart travelled to Namibia with filmmakers Ryan Dalton and Oscar Henderson to help them make Beyond the Trigger. The film, now on YouTube, explores the debate about trophy hunting by talking to the people in the country. Ryan was a vegan and admits that exploring the subject of trophy hunting by meeting the communities gave him a whole new perspective. There's been elements of surprise that have continued to happen even since I've come back and it's as these conversations have continued but it I think I felt it a lot in the film was the sheer passion for wildlife and I, I kind of feel a bit bad for saying that because I don't want to feel like I didn't think that people out there didn't have a passion for wildlife but because it's so normal I thought maybe it wouldn't be as exciting for people and communities out there but they're so passionate about their wildlife culturally from a conservation angle from a sustainability, from what it means to them as an individual, that kind of stuff surprised me and stuck with me a long time. Ryan knows that his film may not change the minds of antis, but he hopes it will reach people willing to listen to the facts. Trophy hunting does kind of come from a colonial past, we can't ignore that, but the communities have that choice now whether to use it or whether to not. And I think that's the big thing. I think that's, that's the part it really does play. And it does play a, a large part in wildlife conservation. Um, it benefits people and motivates people to want to live with wildlife. You know, they're not easy animals to live around, especially when we're talking about elephants, lions and leopards. There are different camps here. People that are very much anti-trophy hunting from an ideological viewpoint, they're not anti-trophy hunting, actually. They're anti-hunting. They're anti the use of animals in, in any way. Um, those people are never going to come away from a, a film like this with, with a sense that perhaps they were wrong. Um, they're ideologically charged um, in terms of their attitudes towards animals and so on. So I think th those people won't, won't be changed. I think people who have read the media, um, you know, are looking at sort of clickbait headlines about people turning elephants into waste paper baskets and stuff, perhaps haven't really thought it through, but see those images, read what is very often misinformation being presented in the press, I think they will probably watch this if they if they do watch it, which is always a problem. But I think if they do engage with it, they'll come away with an understanding that perhaps what they've read in 200 words on some clickbait article isn't necessarily the full truth. Um, in some cases, actually, isn't even a partial truth. Um, but they'll come away with it with a, with a more enhanced understanding, hopefully. But, you know, pe people can watch the film and come to whatever conclusion they want. But what they can't do is watch the film and state that communities gain no benefit anywhere in the world, for example, which I've seen um, said, you know, Ryan went down there and spoke to people who very clearly outlined the benefits that they get and also very clearly outlined some of the problems and some of the issues. It's a very open handed film, actually. It's, it's really refreshing to see. And I think Ryan and, and Oscar as well, Oscar Henderson, who put the film together, has done an incredible job at weaving together those stories and, and sort of 
producing something that allows people to go on a similar sort of journey that Ryan went on from not really understanding it at all and thinking it's abhorrent to then realizing it's more complex and then you know not everyone gets the opportunity to go and speak directly to people but Ryan did and you know it's nice to sort of eavesdrop if you like on those conversations. Professor Hart says people often question his motives for speaking out for trophy hunting and its benefits for conservation and communities that rely on it. The most common accusation is that um, somehow me and, and in fact others in this debate are shills, um, that we're corrupt, that we're being paid for by you know some shadowy brown envelopes from Safari Club International and so on. Um, th these sorts of um, accusations are kind of run of the mill now. You know, the first time they drop into your box, you're like, oh, this is... What are these people saying now? It's just like, yeah, whatever. Um, you know, it's categorically not true. Um, I don't receive any funding from, from these organisations. Ryan admits some of his friends who are vegans are surprised by his decision to make the film. I was, I was vegan for a very long time. I was vegan for about seven or eight years. I've only just this year um, started, to, started to eat a tiny bit of meat due to health reasons. But it's not a, once, a meat, I, uh, once a week I eat a tiny bit of venison. I, there was surprise. There was people like looking at me going, really, you're doing a film about trophy hunting? And I think actually the, the funny thing was when people come to see the London premiere um, that hadn't watched all the posts leading up to it, they thought they were going to be watching a film about trophy hunting, slagging it off. And then when they saw this film talking about, you know, or really just platforming what local people were saying, they were a bit taken back. As a scientist and a father, Professor Hart is clear why he feels that showing the truth about trophy hunting and its role in protecting species is essential. I'm interested in this from an academic perspective and I'm interested in it because I want my children and my grandchildren and my grandchildren's grandchildren to be able to go to places like Southern Africa and we're always focusing on Africa but there's many other places in the world um, and be able to see wildlife outside of protected areas and national parks and you know fortress style conservation as I've been able to and at the moment trophy hunting is a part of that conservation landscape it's a part of the conservation toolkit and just because many people don't like it um, and I would include me actually and in that I, I don't like seeing those images any more than, than, than many other people um, doesn't change the fact that it is still playing in many cases a positive part in conservation and we can't ignore that and we can't ignore the evidence behind that and stick to our ideological perspectives if by doing that we are going to cause conservation concerns, uh, conservation harms. See the link below for the film that Adam and Ryan worked on. Thanks, Adam and Ryan. And you can read Deborah's article on this, which goes alongside the film on our website, link below. Next, from Antis to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, James Marchington has the top hunting and shooting videos this week in Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. First up this week, we're in the USA. Wooded Beardsman sets out to take a deer and ends up shooting a coyote with a nasty case of mange. Staying in the States, deer meat for dinner is on a boat in Louisiana, hunting what we know as coipu, or as he calls them, massive marsh rats, then cooking up Cajun rat rolls. Tasty and a little chewy, apparently. Steve Chingren has made this fascinating falconry film, flying peregrines after sage grouse flushed by pointers. Back to the UK and primal nomad Bushcraft stalks a gold medal roebuck with Chris Dalton in Ayrshire. Meanwhile, Wash Wildfowler has bought himself a Thermion XP50 scope and has a successful outing after foxes with fellow YouTuber Robin Foxer. It's the usual mayhem with the Suffolk and Norfolk Rat Pack as they clear a pig farm with a huge rat infestation. More dog action from GT Pest Control ferreting the hedges with Harold and Bella and a handful of purse nets. Finally, something a bit different from Night Crew. They're fed up apologising for hunting and say it's time we made a stand. That's it for this week. We've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email Charlie the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click the like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, Pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's out 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye. Goodbye.